Hi, I'm Lee Tushler, Executive Editor of Design World Magazine. And I'm Michelle DeFrangia, Assistant Editor of Design World Magazine. Well, Lee, looks like I should have brought toothpaste today, judging by the electric toothbrush parts I see here. You'd be hard-pressed to brush your teeth with an electric toothbrush in this state of disassembly. <laughs> what we have here is a Philips Sonicare Elite Series toothbrush, or at least most of its pieces parts. This is an interesting device in it that it has inductive charging and a special way of moving the toothbrush that doesn't involve an electric motor. We'll start with a quick look at the internals of the handle. We see the battery, which is a nickel cadmium 1.2 volt unit from Sanyo, the pickup coil in the base, which is used for inductive charging, and the massive electromagnet here on an E-shaped frame, which is used to move the brush head back and forth to get the brushing movement. The circuit board that contains the electronics solders onto the seven pins for the pickup coil, the battery, and the brush head drive coil. So we'll start the analysis with the charging process. The charging unit doubles as a holder for the toothbrush. And when we park the toothbrush in the holder and put a scope on the inductive pickup coil, we get a waveform that turns out to be at a frequency of about 100 kilohertz. So the base unit is generating a 100 kilohertz signal and the brush unit picks it up. But AC power from a wall outlet is at 60 hertz, not 100 kilohertz, right? Of course. So the base unit has to contain a frequency converter that ups the frequency from 60 to 100 kilohertz. Unfortunately, we aren't going to be able to see that because the base unit electronics is potted in some kind of an epoxy, as I discovered when I tried to take it apart. So there's not much to see there. So why does the toothbrush boost the power frequency so high? Well, the components you need to work at 100 kilohertz power are a lot smaller than those necessary for 60 hertz power. So you find that all electric toothbrushes that I know of, not just this particular model, boost the power signal up to at least the range of tens of kilohertz to keep the components on the handle small. Then how does the toothbrush turn 100 kilohertz into DC power for charging the battery? Good question. In fact, this little teardown took a bit longer than I had initially planned because the answer to that question wasn't immediately obvious. There are teardowns of other brands of electric toothbrushes out on the web that reveal what you'd call conventional rectifier components. In those teardowns, the circuit board in the brush contains a couple of rectifier diodes and a capacitor or two for filtering to get a DC signal that then goes to the rest of the components on the board. Well, that's not at all what's going on in the, the Philips Sonicare brush. When you follow the teeny tiny traces on the board, you find that the pickup coil goes directly to this 24-pin chip right here. There's no intervening components for rectification or anything else. So it's this chip that's doing the rectifying, but that's not all it's doing. If you examine its connections, you quickly conclude that there's also an 8-bit processor on this chip. It's easy to figure this is an 8-bit chip rather than a 4-bit version, which you find in other brands of electric toothbrushes because the six LEDs on the board that show the state of the battery charging connect to six pins on the chip. And two more of the chip pins go to another chip that basically drives the brush back and forth. That gives you eight outputs, as you would get from an 8-bit device. If you had any further doubts, the presence of a crystal oscillator on the back side of the board is a dead giveaway that we have a clock circuit here. If you wanted to know what the chip does, couldn't you have just looked up its part number on the web? If I had done that, it uh, would have made this teardown a lot easier. <laughs> but this seems to be a non-standard part. Its markings indicate it comes from AMS, or Austria Microsystems. But AMS doesn't make a processor chip, let alone one that contains some kind of AC rectifier. So we have to conclude this is an ASIC of some kind that AMS did for Philips that combines a processor and some kind of 100 kilohertz rectifier. Okay, so now back to the 100 kilohertz power signal. How does that chip convert it to DC to charge the battery? I can only guess, since this isn't a standard part. But there's a clue on the board in the form of five capacitors. You'll also note that there aren't any chip inductors on this board. It looks as though a couple of these capacitors might be part of the clock oscillator, but the other three don't seem to have any function other than maybe to work in the rectifier circuit somehow. Now, there's an AC to DC rectification scheme that uses capacitors only, no inductors. It's called a charge pump. Basically uses a network of diodes and charging or discharging capacitors to change an AC signal to a DC signal. 
While the AC signal is positive, current flows to the diodes and charges the capacitors. When the AC signal goes negative, the diodes don't conduct and the capacitors discharge. You can use multiple stages to get better rectification. So, my guess is that this toothbrush uses some kind of simple charge pump to get DC that charges up the battery. Also, a look at the specs for the Sanyo battery reveals it slow charges at 150 milliamps in about 16 hours. The Sonicare manual says it takes 24 hours to fully charge the brush, so it may be using a charge current below 150 milliamps. It seems to be well within the level that an ASIC like this should be able to handle. Now obviously I'm only guessing about how this thing rectifies 100 kilohertz, so if anybody watching this video can shed more light on the process, I hope they chime in via the comment section below our uh, little video. So once you've rectified AC into DC and charged up the battery, what happens next? The most interesting part of what goes on happens when the brushes move back and forth. You've got two different momentary contact switches that turn on the brush. One is the main turn-on switch, the other changes the speed of the brush if you want. The processor chip has an input from both of them. When you push the switch, the processor turns on a circuit that generates an oscillating electric field. The way this happens is via another chip, which we see here in the diagram. Though I had a lot of trouble identifying the AMS chip containing the processor and the rectifier, this one was easy. It's a Toshiba dual in-channel MOSFET. An output from the processor goes to the gate of each MOSFET. Each MOSFET output ties to one end of the coil driving the brush. There's a center tap on the coil that connects directly to the positive terminal of the battery. So in operation, the processor drives one side of the coil then the other to generate an alternating magnetic field that vibrates the brush back and forth. I wasn't able to measure that frequency, but one of the original patents for the electric toothbrush that you could find online says it's in the range of about 250 hertz. But how exactly does this thing move a toothbrush? First thing I'll point out are these two diodes. I initially thought these had something to do with rectifying the 100 kilohertz charging waveform until I mapped out all the tiny little traces on the circuit board. It turns out these diodes are there to bleed off the inductive kick that arises when you suddenly switch on these big coils. You find the same kind of diodes on circuits that switch electromechanical relays because the same inductive kick happens there. Without the diodes, you destroy the MOSFETs. As I said, the processor chip connects to the two MOSFET gates. You can see two resistors on the board, and they are pull-down resistors that connect to the MOSFET gates. The result of all this is an oscillating field that appears at the end of the E-shaped frame here. The field interacts with the bottom of the brush head. And on the bottom of the brush head, you see what are two magnets. And you can see they're pretty strong magnets at that. As the field changes, it basically pushes the magnets back and forth, which in turn connect to the brush through these torsion bars. And after a few minutes of this, you have clean teeth. Well, Lee, I definitely had no idea I was holding all those kilohertz in my hand when I used my electric toothbrush. For more teardown videos like this one, check out our website, designworldonline.com. And thanks for watching.